abortion center, whatever you are. That's what you're asking for, a loyalty oath. I wouldn't do it. I didn't ask for a loyalty When did I ask for a loyalty oath? Number two. Wait, wait, hold on. Marshall, when did I ask for a loyalty oath? Why, why do you? That's what you... No, 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 no. When did I? Well, when you say we, the Muslims must stand up and denounce what the Islamists are doing or their part and parcel of the problem of the enemy. Yeah, so how is that, how is that me asking for a loyalty oath from anybody? Come on, Marshall, try harder. I don't have to prove to you that I'm against... Islamic State. As a all right then. All right then. Thank you for your call, Marshall. Uh, perception is reality. We'll just sit back quietly, let the terrorists go on blowing up innocent people at concerts and soccer stadiums, and we'll sit here in America. And you can. I'll have a T-shirt made for you that says "Political Correctness is Domestic Terrorism." That's my saying. Okay, because that's what it is. If you don't want to stand up for Islam? Don't. OK, but then don't get mad at me and everybody else listening out there when huh, the perception is reality that Islam is a cancer in the world and Muslim terrorists are trying to kill us all. Amazing. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Uh, line eight, Eugene, WBAP, Dallas. How are you? Welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. You know. I'm a former missionary from North Africa, and you know I've been for years. I taught uh, some things and, t and worked with Muslims, and th there's a, in this country now there is a covert and an overt risk. We know the overt one is terrorism, but covertly we don't. We're no one's talking about what Islam actually teaches, and Islam actually, among other things, denies that Jesus Christ was ever put on a cross, denies that he was resurrected denies that he died for the sins, sins of man. Now, what we're doing in our schools, we're embracing Islam to study it more, to study the five pillars, and what you're going to start to see happen in this country in a few decades is going to be the mythology of Christianity and talking about things that, that we hold as true today will be start to become myth because the school systems will start to embrace and investigate Islam, and Islam directly attacks Christianity, which is a part of the fabric of this country. And so that is a very covert risk, and we're, I'm seeing it as... So you're saying basically, as Dr. Savage says here many times, and I've, I've said uh, in, in a lesser way, that it, it's in... And it's, as he says in Government Zero, it's so incremental that people don't even notice, and that by the time it, it happens, it's going to be too late. That's right, and and they'll they'll, all, they'll usher in a different mindset and and and, a, and an indirect indoctrination of of Christianity and Islam, and uh, you know parents are already concerned. You know Christian parents are, are concerned about their children losing their faith in, in universities, and that's what's happening. But it, it'll happen at the elementary school. It'll happen in high school. It'll happen much younger because. We, are, we don't have any guardrails up, and we're not even... Well, it happens It happens too because there's just a lot of distractions out there. Eugene, thanks for your call as far as, you know, technology and, and you know, trying to survive in this economy and whether you can afford college, and if you don't go to college, what are you going to do for a living? Uh, there's too many distractions. The, the uh, fractured family home, single dads, single moms, when families are together, when there is a mom and dad present in the house, she's working, he's working, everybody's exhausted when they're not working. Um, you think at times like that they would use their faith to find power and strength to keep moving forward, but they, they just don't. Um, hey, if you're holding, please continue to hold. My name is Lou Pate. Um, uh, happy to be here sitting in for Dr. Savage. He will return tomorrow. And again, it's number three on the New York Times bestseller list and moving up. Government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. Follow the doctor on Twitter at A Savage Nation. And don't forget to sign up for free for the Savage newsletter at michaelsavage.com. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate here with you, the home of government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. That's the doctor's uh, latest book. Uh, it is fantastic. I am holding it in my hand. Uh, you can uh, find it at michaelsavage.com. And while you're there, sign up for the Michael Savage newsletter. Of course, check him out on Facebook. It is the Facebook page with 
said book on there. Robert and Jim are here. They're doing a fantastic job. I, I don't do this alone. I have their help. Uh, they're shepherding me through, and um, couldn't do it without you guys. You're doing a fantastic job. Um, Robert had sent me a story that says, Agents nab Pakistanis with terrorist connections crossing the U.S. border. This was in the Washington Times. So if you think terrorism is not a problem, folks... You're living in Obama's dream world, where there is no terrorism. There certainly is no Muslim terrorism. Chapter 7, I'm going to get to the phones in just a minute. Government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. Chapter 7, the sleeper awakens. Okay, This pertains to what we're talking about, folks. And, and uh, Dr. Savage writes, As I've said many times about this administration, it doesn't matter whether they're playing for the other side or just clueless academics in over their heads. Either way, the results for the American people are the same. These progressives are a clear and present danger to the American people every day they remain in office. We can't necessarily just wait for Obama's term, uh, to wait out Obama's term. Either Hillary Clinton certainly isn't talking about doing anything different picking up right where obama have left off she's talking about lgbt activism income inequality and global warming as i've discussed in other chapters she's been friendly with the muslim world for decades we don't have the time to wait for the right people to get elected without a serious opposition party it may not matter who wins the election besides the sleeper cells already started to wake from their slumber. In, a in April, uh, Abdirham Sheikh Mohammed was arrested for plotting to attack police and military personnel after returning from ISIS training camp in Syria. The initial reports sounded like something Obama's sorority had scripted from its latest press conference. Mohammed was initially described as an Ohio man and a U.S. citizen. You might have thought this was just an average local boy who fell in with the wrong crowd and was led astray. In reality, Mohammed was a Somalian immigrant who was already plotting to commit terrorism within the United States when he became a U.S. citizen in 2014. His communications with his brother indicate that becoming a citizen was all part of the plot to become an ISIS agent within our borders. How did this man become a U.S. citizen? Where was the DHS, the TSA, and the rest of the security apparatus our billions fund? How does an immigrant from Somalia get through the process to become a citizen and receive a U.S. passport while NSA is intercepting the phone and email metadata on every man, woman, and child in this country? Could it be they are looking for Somali terrorists? Are they spending too much time targeting conservatives for tax audits? Again, government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. Line 7, Keith, WNTW in Virginia. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, stick around. We'll get right to you. Sorry about that. You are listening to Lou Pate here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage, who will return tomorrow. In the meantime, we're talking about a lot of things, and we encourage you to take part in the conversation, 855-400-SAVAGE. Remember to uh, go to michaelsavage.com and sign up uh, for free for the Michael Savage newsletter. Make sure you follow him on Twitter, at a Savage Nation, and also Facebook. His Facebook page is the one with the book, Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. We've been uh, discussing the book, referencing the book, reading from the book, and uh, also taking your calls um, on a lot of different things. We're talking mostly about terrorism. For those of you just joining us, it's, it's worth a mention. The United States got caught spying on its own congressman because it was spying on Benjamin Netanyahu in an effort to take him down. 
prior to his reelection earlier in March this year. Uh, Dr. Savage talks about that historic speech in front of the Congress and the Senate in his book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. So we have that. We have the issue of Iran who we're in bed with, thanks to John Kerry and President Obama. Uh, and they have firing rockets. One landed 1,500 yards from an American carrier. Truly an amazing phenomenon. And as we all know, as 2015 comes to a close, it is not, it is not a popular time to be a white man in Obama's America. Oh, the media will have you think that the police are gunning down black men, hands up, don't shoot, and all the other lies that come. But meanwhile, we have the racist uh, Salon.com picking up a column from Alternet saying white men must be stopped. The very future of mankind depends on it. For 500 years, they've exploited their fellow man and plundered the planet. It's time they rein themselves in. What planet are these people living on? Meanwhile, we have ISIS terrorists who were caught crossing the border, Afghanistan uh, uh, terrorists trying to get into the United States. We have a couple in London, we touched on this earlier, convicted of uh, ISIS-inspired uh, couple trying to blow up uh, places in London. They have been convicted. Uh, they were going to do it against the, to celebrate the 311 bombing of the train uh, many years ago. ISIS living in the head of Americans panic at Disney World on Christmas Day when someone thought a shot was fired. It wasn't, thankfully. People sent running. It's crazy. It's kind of still a lot we have to get to. to remember, if you're listening in California on the great KSFO, you have, um, as of January 1st, Police can confiscate your guns without asking. This is all Obama. Beginning January 1st, police in California may confiscate firearms from gun owners. Um, it is truly an amazing deal. But let's get back to the phones because it is you, the listeners, who are important here on the Savage Nation. Uh, let's go to uh, Keith. Uh, Keith, WNTW in Virginia. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. Hey, I want to submit that uh, Iran is not the number one Muslim state sponsor of terror. I say it's Saudi Arabia, and I say number two is Turkey. I'll I don't know where you. Iran falls, but I, if, you, if you just look at it, you can find that those two countries have spent a lot more money on terrorism. Turkey's buying all the oil from ISIS. They've spent I'll tell you what, Keith. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. I'm going to say to you that Saudi Arabia is a terrorist nation. The royal family there are a part and parcel um, with the terrorists. Uh, they are just better at concealing it. I, I guess Iran with their, you know, Ahmadinejad was there for a while, and now you got Rouhani. They were a little sloppy. Remember when all of the young people protested in the streets and they sent snipers out? They killed that young woman. I think she was only 19 years old, a college student. Um, they, they are just sloppy. I don't think they're as sophisticated. As as the Saudis and, and what you say about Turkey, uh, that's that's true. But you know, on paper, it, it is Iran, but it's a it's a photo finish. It's a horse race, and does it really make a difference if if one is a, a nose hair ahead of the other, Keith? I think Saudi is way more than a nose hair beyond what they spend on terrorism. All their Wahhabi mosques they they fund around the world, even in our own country, in Europe. Uh, you know, you got the Bin Laden family. How come all these Saudis got to fly out of the United States on the morning of 9/11 when nobody else could fly? There's that's an excellent. That's an excellent question. Why? Why does the United States do so much business with Saudi Arabia? I'm with you, Keith. I'm not arguing with you on that. Well, it raises a lot of questions for for both Democrats and Republicans. Who I. I am. I am adamant about. Do not have our best interests in mind. That's right. I'm just going to put up a false boogeyman for us. we got to get the truth out of these little weasels. I'm with you, Keith. Thanks for your call there from WT and NTW. It's, it's one of those things where, I, I said this the last time I filled in for Dr. Savage, they throw these petty arguments out there, and we get hung up in the minutia. A lot of people over water coolers at bars, arguing liberal versus conservative, conservative versus liberal, Democrat versus Republican. The Democrats and the Republicans in Washington, D.C., not the Main Street, not you and your uncle and your aunt and your sons and your daughters, the Republicans in D.C. are a vermin, okay? They don't care about anything but themselves and power. And add Hillary Clinton into the mix, and it's only going to get worse. Let's go to our nation's capital. Um, Jay, WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. All right, thanks for having me. Honestly, I'd just like to say you're just really talking a bunch of nonsense. I really think you know nothing about Islam. You're really just spewing a lot of political fear-mongering propaganda. 
I mean, honestly, if anybody knows anything about religion, they would know that Muslim, Jews, and true Christians <clears throat> worship the same God. As Muslims, you know, we don't believe in different religions. We believe in different books that were sent to different prophets and messengers in the Quran being the last 